2016, a good year for gaming all around. Lots of new games that caught my interest, and playing catch up with a ton of games I've been meaning to play. This became a lot easier now that I had a better job, and finally got the new 3DS XL to get many games that I missed out on. So yeah, great year personally in terms of gaming. So now I want to share with you all the great titles that made it into my collection. Seriously, lots of games that I can consider some of my all-time favorites. It surprised me. Usual rules apply, one per franchise, not counting spin-offs, and of course, only games I played. As much as it pains me to say it, I also won't be including any remakes or enhanced ports of games that I played before 2016. But a very high honorable mention to these games, specifically the World Ends With You solo remix and the PS3 version of Vesperia, which I played for the first time this year. They mastered two of my favorite games and I recommend you play them. That is, if you don't mind getting past the language barrier in Vesperia PS3. Besides that, the only other rule is that the game didn't have to come out this year, I just had to play it for the first time. But hey, I did play some games that came out this year, to which only two of those made the list. <laughs> This year I was on a huge fighting game high and I picked up quite a bit. Of course, I played so many amazing games that sadly only my favorite fighting game I played this year could make it on the list. Regardless, that doesn't detract even a little from the quality that is Blaze Blue Chrono Phantasma Extend. A deep story with great characters? Yeah, th that's good and all, especially the whole character part, as that makes them more fun to play as, but it's a freaking fighting game! Who the hell cares about all that? Everything else is what matters. First off, look at these graphics! This is easily one of the most beautiful games I've played, as I'm a sucker for hand-drawn HD 2D sprites like this. They make me all tingly, and that music puts me in the mood to beat some pretty anime characters. No, seriously, why the hell is the music so good in this game? Whatever, I'm not complaining. Just keep those badass guitar riffs we all love, and we're Gucci! Fighting feels fast and technical, as you really have to work for those bigger combos. Otherwise, you'll find yourself booted back to the character select, but still wanting more. Everything was so satisfying to land, and thanks to the characters having so much, well, character, the game was a freaking blast to play. I haven't touched the story mode, as it seems like you have to have played the past games to understand it, but if the fighting's this fun, I really don't miss it, and I'll be sure to come back for years to come. Just don't challenge me yet. I'm not that good. I apologize. You were a girl all along. Gonna be honest with you guys, I haven't had the best time with Zelda. There have been good games, but I've yet to play one that's pulled me in completely. Of course, I haven't played many, but that right there is my reason. However, I wanted more Wii U games and decided to give Wind Waker HD a shot. Wow, what a fun and engaging game we have here. A story that's grand, yet on a much more personal premise than the other ones, and that's just the way I like it. These graphics just look gorgeous, not only technically due to the HD, but the art direction as well. Spoilers, cell shading is my absolute favorite when it comes to video game art, and this game stands up there as one of the prettiest. And that music? I mean, I know, it's Zelda, what do you expect? But this is just so good, even with that in mind. It's catchy, memorable, and atmospheric all at once. I mean, my gosh, this is good stuff. But 60 bucks? Link handles well, dungeons are expertly designed, and sailing is actually fairly relaxing in my opinion. While I haven't finished this game yet, I'm sure it's gonna end up being my favorite in the franchise, and I'm looking forward to more adventures across the Great Sea. This past year started with some cleanup with the Tales series, as it's now my favorite franchise. That being said, I saved the most recent release, Zestiria, for last. A lot of people said that this wasn't one of the better games, in fact, it was a bit controversial in the franchise. However, I rather enjoyed my time with this. In fact, it's one of my favorites, and a great entry in the series to me. The story does start off very cliche, but trust me, the game knows this and pokes fun at it a lot. But eventually, it takes this and molds it into something very interesting and fresh, making the narrative a hell of a lot better than I could have ever imagined. The characters were a highlight in series fashion, with this cast having some awesome characters. My favorite is Edna, and if she's not your favorite, you're wrong! Moving on, the graphics are pretty from an art perspective, even if they weren't the best for the system's hardware. But DAMN THAT SOUNDTRACK! My favorite in the series used to be Legendia, but that game's composer came back and said, Psh, I can do a whole lot better than that, and gave us an original soundtrack that I still can't get over. It goes without saying that it's one of my favorites in gaming. The game harkens back to Grace's F's masterful combat, as that seems to now be a series standard. 
That's perfectly fine by me, and while this may not be as good as Grace's F's combat, it was still a lot of fun with some great additions. Surprisingly, my favorite part of the gameplay wasn't fighting, but rather exploring the world, as it was very open almost up to Xenoblade and GTA levels. So many secrets, extra areas to go to, just walking around was a joy, and got me invested in this fantastic fantasy world. Overall, a great game that I feel deserves a lot more love. Oh yeah, and shoutouts to it having the best opening in the Tales franchise as well. Poor Wii U! I enjoyed this system quite a bit, so it's a shame to see it fall so hard. I just hope the Mario Maker servers don't go down with it. At least for a few years, because that Nintendo Switch! Whew. Super Mario Maker has surprised me in terms of its sheer entertainment, and that's not even thanks to the developers for most of it. Level creating is fun and all, but let's be honest, the online levels created by all of you guys is what makes this game such a magical experience. There are so many creative ideas here, challenging my Mario skills and providing me with an endless, mind-bending experience that I can't get over. It's the kind of game I could just pick up and play that I'll never get bored of. My favorite way to play these is through the 100 Mario Challenge, and on those days where I hate myself, I'll play on the hardest difficulty. But a word of advice, don't play on the hardest difficulty. Seriously, don't do it. Just don't. Not much else to say here besides... A new Kirby game came out this year, Planet Robobot, and it blew everyone away! But I can't include that on the list because I haven't played it yet! Regardless of my super late appearance to this party, Triple Deluxe reminded me why Kirby keeps pulling me in. A simple story that somehow gets interesting near the end, graphics that bring out a side of me that I'm not particularly proud of, and bouncy happy music that puts us all in our happy place. Of course, the game is solid as well, with great level design, bosses, and controls that make every mistake your fault. Yes, we get it, Kirby games are always good, so what makes this stand out? Great copy abilities, with the archer just being ridiculously fun, extra modes that are challenging yet fun, and speaking of which, this game is kinda tough for series standards. That's crazy! I don't remember the last time this franchise challenged me so much when it wasn't due to slippery controls. Very... Very slippery controls! All in all, a great Kirby game that makes it obvious why it was so well received when it came out. Even if I couldn't play the newest, this one will do just fine. Although, I wouldn't mind being a part of the Robobot hype. <laughs> why do I have to be so poor? <laughs> But not poor enough for Pokemon! I'll go bankrupt before I miss out on Generation 7! After getting back into the series and seeing all the hype for this newest installment, I did the obvious thing and bought it day one. No mistakes were made on that day in gaming. Personally, I picked up Moon, so I'm going with that as this entry. I love this series as much as the other guy, but this game changed everything for the better. A much more gripping story since Generation 5, graphics that push the handheld to the point of slowdown, music that this series consistently gets right no matter how much the quality suffers, and gameplay that's easily the best we've seen yet. The region is a lot of fun to explore, the brand new Pokemon and some of the best we've seen yet, and battling has become so much fun! Also, it's given me that sense of challenge that felt missing throughout the entirety of Generation 6. I didn't like Gen 6 guys, but positivity! Everything about this game feels complete, minus that embarrassing frame rate, and it's easy to see the life and love oozing from this game. Whether you're playing the A Gamer's Worst Enemy or Vampire version, these games are good. So very good. Looking forward to the possible third installment or anything from this series at this point. Unless it's Generation 6. Dang it, I did it again, didn't I? Ladies and gentlemen, Mood Whiplash! Let's go from the happy game of Pocket Monsters to a visual novel death trap in which all your favorites will die! Huzzah! This is 9 hours, 9 persons, 9 doors. I've gotten very interested in visual novels over the course of the year, and this was the one that demanded my attention whenever I'd hear about it. It's easy to see why. As a visual novel, the story is so damn good! Plot twists at every corner, and due to the game allowing player input, there are many different endings that are all twisted in their own ways. And oh boy, do they hurt the soul. This is partly due to the cast being written so well, with every character having their own secrets to discover. It's a lot to take in, but it's due to this and the many endings that make this game so replayable. I love it. Graphics are fine, music is atmospheric, nothing special, but the game is fun. 
It's mainly puzzles and escape the room scenarios that all challenge you in different ways. I enjoy them as they cause me to think in ways I never would have imagined. It's great, really great, and I can't wait to play the rest of the Nonary games. Can't wait for more of the developers screwing with my mind and nights crying over the deaths of my favorite characters. Good times. Good, good times. Finally, Azure Striker Gunvolt 2 is here. It's okay. At least that's what I would have said when you asked me after playing the Gunvolt side. However, after getting the true ending, I started to get the sudden urge to replay the game again, go for the best times I could possibly get in each level, and go for the game's many challenges. In short, I had fallen in love with this game without realizing it. The story realizes the potential the first game left and just goes ham with the weird yet dark feel that only this game can provide. It's insanely creative and a blast to see through until the ending. Somehow it's even better yet more depressing than the last, which both makes me really happy and drives me crazy. But spoilers, so I'll keep quiet now. The characters are even better than the last, with the villain stealing the spotlight once again. Trust me, if the heroes don't do it for you, it's almost impossible to hate the characters you're not supposed to like. Kinda ironic, wouldn't you say? The heroes are all well written as they should, but man those villains! Zonda, you can slay me any day. Oh, well, may maybe not. The graphics are more detailed than the first one, which was already full of eye candy, and the music is freaking phenomenal! Seriously, I never expected such awesome music from this game, and I definitely recommend you give the soundtrack a good listen. But how was the game? It's amazing, but no one's shocked. Gunvolt controls just as good as he did in the first game as he goes with that old phrase, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. He controlled like a dream in the original, so why don't we shift gears to this installment's new playable character, Copen? And once again, Inti Creates shows us that they know exactly what they're doing. Not now, please. Thank you. Copen is fast, fun, encourages combos, and dangerous play that makes Gunvolt's gameplay so fun to begin with. It's all there with extras that only add to the combat without losing sight of what makes the game fun to begin with. Bosses are also masterfully made just as they were in the first game, but even more so here while remaining challenging. Everything's here and accounted for, and along with the voice acting being added from the get-go and the sheer amount of dialogue, this game has the depth and replay value that the first game sorta of lacked, making it my preference out of the two. One of my favorite 3DS games, 2D platformers, and games in general, this game ended up being the masterpiece I wanted it to be. Why is this dude freaking out about Danganronpa all the time? Oh, that's why. Last year, my great buddy N got me hooked onto this little game series called Danganronpa. You know, that game franchise that stars a bunch of anime high schoolers that decide to start killing each other? Yeah, that's the one. It's great! And while I do note the flaws, I still find the first game an all-around enjoyable experience. But guys, the second one? Holy freaking crap, the second one. Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce you to a gift from the heavens, the visual novel to end all visual novels, a game that the more I think about just gives me more reasons to love each and everything it does. And you can't really blame me because in and out Danganronpa 2 Goodbye Despair is a masterpiece. The story never knew where it was going, and as someone who predicted nearly every murder in the first game and couldn't predict any here, that speaks volumes as to how good the mysteries and build-up were. Also, with the main appeal being death and the tension of who will die next, it's great to know that the characters are all likable and well-developed. Except for, I don't know, maybe one, and at that it's due to personal preference. Graphics are all pleasing to look at, giving the game an anime feel, and all portraits and such were well-drawn with music that fits every moment and gets me pumped to solve the mysteries of the game. It's also a lot of fun to play with, the investigating, the trials being a complete joy, and the fact that it challenges me not only in terms of skill, but with my brain power. This challenged myself and many others to think outside the box and solve every mystery and question this bizarre world, and damn it, I loved every minute of it. Some of my favorite characters, moments, themes, rewards, and so much more all come together to make a game that I simply adore. Simply put, it's one of my favorite games of all time. So why is it number two? Well... Like this wasn't obvious. What I once thought was set in stone in my top three favorite games dropped down to fourth because Persona 4 Golden does everything I want in a game right and then some. Damn straight, Persona 4 Golden is my third favorite game of all time, and who could honestly blame me? A story about a murder mystery that keeps me on my toes the whole way through. Characters that make me smile, laugh, cry, and feel like they're real. 
each member were having genuine emotions and likable personalities. Not to mention, this game introduced me to my love, Risei Kujikawa. What were we talking about? Graphics are kinda mad, but whatever, that's what. One thing, the anime cutscenes are dope as hell and the music was all so memorable and catchy, making me want to spend money just to listen to it repeatedly. The game was so fun to play at being a life simulator and a dungeon crawler, with the former allowing me to have a job, go to school, and most importantly spend time with all the characters to learn more about them and deepen my bonds. And the latter allowed for some deep turn-based combat, bosses that tested my strategy, and allowed for the story to have even more depth and mysteries alongside some of the greatest themes I've gotten to experience in all of gaming. It's a complete package, and along with the extra content that take way too long to cover in a countdown segment, Persona 4 Golden is the ultimate JRPG experience that I fell head over heels in love with. Hell, even if you don't have a Vita or PS TV, just get the original on the PSN or PS2, it's that good! The point is, this is a game that continues to surpass my expectations even many playthroughs later, and a game that I can't recommend enough to anyone remotely interested in the franchise and in JRPGs. It's my favorite game I played in 2016, and one of my favorite games of all time, helping to make this year a great one. Just stay away from Risei, she's mine. We are